Hello students, uh, today we want to pursue further what we have done in the in our last classes. The objective and of this presentation want to, is to enable the students the to design, design and procedure of sliding or the bearing application. For example, if we have been given a bearing for a central pump which is need to be designed for a little load of 7 kN, a general diameter of 100 mm and RPM of general as 1440 mm that means W is given to us, D diameter of general is given to us and RPM is given to us then by following the procedure which is being laid down in the uh, upcoming slides we are supposed to find these many of parameters like what will be the length of bearing, what lubricant is going to be used and what will be its operating temperature, what would be the viscosity of the lubricant, what radial clearance is required, what would be the minimum oil film thickness, what would be friction coefficient, how much heat will be generated, how much heat will be dissipated and if any if amount of uh, cooling, artificial cooling is required, that means if Hg is not equal to Hd, then what amount of heat which needs to be dissipated uh, artificially will going to find. So we'll we'll start the uh, presentation with a brief uh, uh, layout of the procedure that ought to be followed, and we'll discuss the things one by one. This is the standard procedure of designing a hydrodynamic or sliding content bearing. We need to follow all these steps one by one and uh, for this we will take help of design data book because uh, in the data book we have been given tables, charts, reference values which we will take help of. So let's start. The very first uh, step is choose appropriate value of L by D for the given application. In many books uh, we have been given reference value of L by D for the application. We have seen in our previous uh, slides that uh, L by D 1 is called as square bearing, L by D greater than 1 is long bearing, L by D less than 1 is short bearing. So we have been given values for uh, values of L by D for different applications. If possible, we can choose L by D as 1 because it is having uh, L by D 1 is close to optimal value. It is neither too, too uh, low and neither too high. So, uh, for the given application, we will take L by D some value. Our L by D is correct or not, that is going to be decided by the uh, value of bearing pressure. Now bearing pressure as you can see over here, it is load over area and area is projected area which is length into diameter. So in the first step we have assumed L by D say 1 and we have been given diameter of journal as 100 mm. So our length will become 100 mm. Now for the given load we will find pressure W upon L into D and we will check the pressure from this table. Say for central pumps, the pressure range is 0.5 to 0.7 megapascal. So, if for the chosen value of L by D, the pressure is coming out to be within this range, our L by D value is okay. If it is not, we will change the value of L by D till we get the bearing pressure in this range. I hope you got this point. So, by this juncture, we have selected a value of L by D and for that L by D our bearing pressure is coming within limits which is for in the table. If L pressure is not coming within limits for L by D equals to 1, we will change the value of L by D until the pressure comes in the permissible range. We, know, we need to assume the value of clearance or a value of C by R. We have seen in the previous slides that general value of C, C is 0 0.001 times R if nothing is given to you. 
we can also take help of data book in which it is being mentioned for bevel materials copper lead and aluminum alloys we can choose these values you can see that uh, the range is starting from 0.001 times r so we have fixed l by d we have checked the pressure and we have assumed value of clearance radial clearance from this table it would be to assume suitable h0 by c h0 is minimum oil film thickness and c is radial clearance which we have uh, fixed in the previous slide now we have got two options for that l by d value we have selected we have got two two options one is h0 by c for maximum load and h0 by c for minimum friction if we have been given that you need to design a bearing from for maximum load we will take the value of h0 by c from this data and if it is being given that we need to design a bearing from minimum friction we will refer this if nothing is given to us we can choose any of the uh, value of h0 by c for that from the two criteria say our l by d if we have taken as 1 and we are designing it for maximum load will assume it to be 0.53 so till now we have fixed what is l by d we have checked pressure we have find the radial clearance and we have assumed the value of fix the value of h0 by c in the next step now we would use remondi and void charts or tables both the data is given in both the forms in the form of tables as well as charts and we'll find another the another non dimensional number which is known as sommer field number as you can see from this table for l by d equals to 1 if our h0 by c is coming out to be either 0.9 or 0.8 this row of data shall be applicable to us and for this 0.9 our s is coming out to be 1.33 if h0 by c is not coming exactly 0.9 or 0.8 we can use the method of interpolation and find what would be the value of s that is sommer field number this is uh, this table uh, is being extracted from uh, the tables given in the data book uh, the table is being uh, uh, is available for other values of lbd also same same you can extract from charts also you can see that this chart is between s and h0 by c for l by d infinity l by d 1 l by d 1 by 2 and l by d 1.1 by 4 so for the chosen value of h0 by c and chosen value of l by d equals to 1 we can take we can we can find a certain what would be the value of bearing characteristic number or sum of a number so we have fixed h0 by c we have found s so field number from either charts or from tables next step would be do would be this is the formula for so field number s is r by c square mu and s upon p we have find we have found s from the tables or chart r by c is known to us and s is uh, rpm rps of journal and p is bearing pressure which we have already determined so in this equation only one unknown is left which is mu which is absolute viscosity in the units of mega pascal per second or newton second per meter square so this formula will give us the value of absolute viscosity so step by step we are moving forward and till now we have we are able to find what viscosity of oil shall be required now after this we would fix the oil which will give the desired viscosity and its operating temperature say if our viscosity is coming out to be 100 newton second per mm square and uh, uh, we have assumed to as say 70 mega 70 degree centigrade so we can say that uh, this oil something sa 70 or sa 60 will be suitable for us so this slide this this chart will fix what lubricant is uh, will be taken by us so to that uh, so that uh, it can have the viscosity of which we have obtained from the sommer field number and what would be the to 
uh, I would like to point out that you can assume TO in the range less than uh, 90 degrees centigrade, you can assume any value uh, because that is uh, an important design parameter. It is going to affect what would be your um, heat dissipated. So below 90, you can assume any value. And for the viscosity, which we have obtained from some point number, we can find which oil will be suitable for us. In the next step, for the sulfur number, we'll find coefficient of friction variable and flow variable from the either Raymondian void table or Raymondian void chart. We have seen that there was a chart between S and H0 by C. Similarly, there is a chart also in the data book between S and R by C into F or S versus CFV and S versus FV. So, for the calculated value of S, we have already found what is mu, that is viscosity, and now we will find what would be CFV, coefficient of friction variable, and FV, flow variable. In this formula, R by S, we have from S versus CFV chart, we, we found what is CFV. Now, for this CFV, R by C is known to us but unknown left is only F. So F will be known to us. This F is friction coefficient. From here, S versus FV chart, we, we found FV. And for known value of R, C, NS and L, we can find what would be Q or oil flow. Since F is known to us, now we can find what is heat generated. That is F versus F into W into V, where F is friction coefficient, W is radial load, and V is velocity of journal. And heat dissipated, which is mass of liberating oil, Cp of oil, and delta of oil. From this, we can check for thermal equilibrium. What do what we mean by thermal equilibrium? We need to ensure that whatever amount of heat is being generated, the same is being dissipated. If it is so, it is fine for us. If it is not so, we need to put what what is meant by that. If Hg minus Hd is some value, say Hg comes out to be 1000 watt and Hd comes out to be say 400 watt, that means out of 1000 watt, only 400 watt heat is being dissipated and remaining 400 watt, uh, remaining 600 watt heat needs to be dissipated more and for that we need to find uh, we need to put artificial cooling like that till now what we have find we have we have uh, fixed what is length of bearing we have checked what pressure bearing pressure is being coming and whether it is in within limits or not we have assumed value of c radial clearance we have fixed value of h0 for the given h0 we have found s Sommerfeld number. From Sommerfeld number, we have we have calculated the viscosity. For this viscosity, we have fixed the lubricant and its operating temperature. From S versus CFV chart, we have found CFV variable, variable, and uh, we have calculated the value of friction coefficient, and we have calculated value of Q from the flow variable. Then we have found what is heat generated and what is heat dissipated. We have, we have checked for thermal equilibrium and at the end we will list all the parameters which we have obtained either obtained from the data book or from the uh, or we have calculated from the uh, given charts and tables. We have to list all these parameters uh, in the end. So if, if you see where we have started in the second slide we, we have listed few parameters that needs to be obtained. With, these, with all these slides, we are coming up with the solution that yes, this, uh, this, all the parameters we have obtained from the uh, procedure that has been laid down in the previous slide. I think uh, you might have understand the uh, concept uh, of designing uh, sliding coded bearing. Uh, following the each step, we can easily find uh, various dimensions. Uh, we'll do a uh, exercise also for this tutorial exercise for this, which will further uh, help in understanding the design procedure of 
sorry quadrant bearing in our next class we'll discuss it further we'll we'll discuss what are where various bearing materials what are various bearing failures what are their causes and remedies i hope you have uh, understood the the design procedure that has been uh, presented in the slide thank you so much for your patient hearing